Okay guys, welcome back to part two of my Bosch electronic distributor service. Now we're going to be looking at centering the stator. Okay, the stator is this uh, big round circle. It's all magnetized. Okay, the screwdriver sticks to it. And we've got the trigger wheel and we've got the poles. Okay, this, this is a six cylinder of course because there's six poles on both parts. Alright, what we're going to do is get this centered so that the poles don't collide with each other. Uh, very important because if the poles collide the module will get a scattered signal and may not fire correctly and if the gaps are too wide it again won't get the correct pulse it needs to work out exactly when to fire the spark plug so you might find uh, your timing will be a little bit erratic if that's not centered properly. Alright, so we're going to show you that. We've done the module in part one. Now, once again, you can do this in the car. You're going to have to rotate the distributor more than likely to uh, get at that back vacuum advanced screw uh, so you can remove it. Alright, and uh, let's go through the steps now of uh, centering that. Whether it's in the car or out of the car, it doesn't matter. But one thing you have to be careful of is that clip. Yeah, that clip, because these are magnets, the clip tends to attract itself there. If it gets into that position and you rotate the engine, bang, the trigger wheel will hit and jam and shear off the pin that's fitted underneath this little circle up here. There's a pin that's going down that track and it holds the uh, trigger wheel in place. All right. So be very mindful of that one. Uh, there's been, I've done a lot of these distributors in the past that have had the broken pin. Uh, sometimes there's a pin in there and sometimes the uh, pin is actually built into the trigger wheel, depending what year model the um, distributor is. All right, so we look at the close-up camera. What we've got to do is loosen the distributor, put it on top dead center or close to your timing mark which will probably be something like that when you line it up. And then all you do is rotate the distributor until you've got them all lined up with each other. With a brass feeler gauge, all right, 10 thou, you'll only get 10 and 12 thou unless you've got a good set. Uh, so we're going to use 10 when the gap is actually 11. Uh, and 12, I don't think you'll get a 12 in there, too tight. We're just going to check it for now, yeah? Just to see if you need to even do the job. So you're going to stick the feeler gauge in between each post. All right. Simple as. That's tight. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. Okay. I'd say this one's probably a little loose because that one's a little tight. All right. So we're going to center it. All right. Uh, that's a simple check you can do in your car and you haven't upset anything except your uh, timing so I hope you took notice exactly where the vacuum unit was in relation to the trigger wheel um, or those posts I should say and put it back exactly where you got it from tighten the distributor down your checks done if it turns out all to be okay uh, now the problems here bushes you need to make sure your bush is not moving around too much. If it's moving around uh, 8 to 10 thou, you've got a real good chance of wiping these posts out. Once the posts are wiped out and they've hit and they've worn material off, you'll see a little bit of material hanging around the, uh, um, the posts area because it's magnetized. So uh, yeah, you'll be able to tell they've been hitting. Uh, but if there's no material present and they have been hitting, that gap will be a lot wider, yeah? And uh, 10 thou feeler gauge just won't cut it. You'll probably be able to get a 14 or 15 thou gauge in there. Once it's got out to wide clearances like that, the ignition module may not process the signal correctly. It has to have all these lined up equal distances to get the strong pulse out of the pickup coil that will send a signal to the module and the module will decide then when to fire the, uh, the uh, coil off and give you spark. 
So yeah, you've got all sorts of little problems that are niggly little things that uh, have got everything to do with the uh, stator and trigger wheel and the, the setup and all the gaps and running true. So you want to make sure your shaft isn't bent either. So this is where you probably <laughs> want the distributor out uh, so you can turn it over and see if it's bent. And uh, if you want to check for bend, you could check all your feeler gauges in one spot, rotate it a little bit more, check it again and see if the gaps have changed. And that'll tell you if you've got a bent shaft. Yeah. All right, we need to adjust it. How do we go about that? Well, vacuum unit has to come off, guys, because we have to move the stator a little bit so that we can line up this little three millimeter tool down and through these little notches to meet up with the uh, Allen screws down underneath. Getting the vacuum unit off, piece of cake. Get yourself the biggest screwdriver that'll fit in the slot <coughs> and undo it. Oh, I've put my camera too damn close to that one. <laughs> Have to go slightly shorter than the screwdriver. Oh, luckily that wasn't too tight. All right, so we'll take these screws right out. Now getting this vacuum unit off is a piece of cake. Getting it back on is the drama. <laughs> As you'll see when we go to put it back together. I might get it first time, I might not. All right. You should be able to lift that up out of the way, pull it aside, and you should be able to tilt that and get it off. But if you can't, just put a little screwdriver down there and take it off its pin. Yeah, all good. Put that aside. Now what we have to do is turn the stator that direction until we line up the Allen key. So put that in there and undo it. As you heard, that was pretty tight. And so it should be. You do not want the stator coming loose. Okay, now you can see it's jiggling all over the place here, yeah? which is exactly what we want so we can get our shims in there. Now, you need to use brass shims, okay? The service manuals say brass when you're going in between and checking the clearances, all right? Now, I haven't got an 11th hour brass shim on me, uh, so I'm going to do the naughty thing, and it's a, it's a scrap distributor, so it's okay for me anyway. For you, um, you need to put brass in there. Now, another trick people have used, and I tr I've actually tried it before, and that's folding uh, some paper until you get the thickness you want, 11th hour. But I couldn't get 11 out of a piece of paper. And when I did jam it in there and tried to turn the trigger wheel, it just was too tight. It just did not fit. All right. I've tried cutting a Coke bottle, the plastic, um, a little strip of that, and fitting it right around the, the circumference. And then turning the trigger wheel. That works. But... It's only 10th hour, all right? So there's still a little bit of play in there. 11th hour is the duck's nuts. If you can get something spaced 11th hour and fit it in between all these uh, poles, that would be the perfect scenario for you. So I've got 11th hour shims, and that's what I'm going to use. And as you can see, they're nice brass color, yeah? So to get them in, we'll move the post away and then we'll put it on the other side so it's a nice snug fit now so now we've centered the stator this way now we're going to fit it over on that side so I might have to push that over and then push it back and we'll get this other one in all right there's only one direction left so We'll get that one in there, and then we'll get another one in there, okay? So that's centered. In the car, that will work out perfect for you. Nothing's going to move. But when it's in uh, a vice like this, if that uh, trigger wheel moves just a little bit, all your spaces will just fall out if you're using individual spaces. So, once that, 
is in that situation where we've got all the shims in, we can then tighten the stator back up. Done. You have now centered the stator. Easy peasy, eh? Pull our washers back out. That job is complete. Now all you have to do is re uh, turn the stator back to its fully anti clockwise position so we can get the vacuum unit back on. Put a bit of grease on your vacuum unit, okay? Just a dob there, a dob underneath actually because it goes in up side down like that so put a bit on the top now getting this in you've got to find that pin so you're going to put that back in there and try and locate it that's all you have to do once you find it you'll be able to push it in now have i got it oh nope i thought i had it then Didn't I tell you this is fun? Okay. Nope, missed it. <laughs> it's really a feeling game. You're feeling around for the pin to find that hole in your vacuum advance unit. <laughs> I'm hitting it. When I'm pushing it in, so if I go down and over, whoop, I might have went too far. Down. No, I'm just not getting onto it. Make sure that hasn't that hasn't moved. Because once you get it on, the stator will move when you go to push the uh, vacuum advance in. Oh, I'm having fun with this. I'm out of practice, I've got to be, eh? It's probably been 20, 20 or 30 years since I've done this one. There must be a trick to it that I, I knew about all those years ago. And uh, I'm going to take a look down in there and see what I'm looking at. There, I can see the pin. There it is, right there. All I've got to do is get that underneath it. And get it in there and there it is I think I got it it's not up high enough yet let's get him on the pin properly and there you have it it's in okay I can pull it out I can push it back in it's on Whew, that took some work <laughs> all right now we just put the screws back into the vacuum advance unit That, whoops, get that lined up. Okay, it's one in. And this one. Nope. Of course not bloody boxes in the way I can't get a screwdriver on there properly I haven't thought out that too well do I all right there we go we'll get that one in with a little tiny screwdriver somehow oh this has turned out to be very painful all because of this bread box I've got here <laughs> Trying to fit my uh, close-up camera in. Okay, do them up tight. And of course, you want to test your vacuum advance before you put it on, yeah? Make sure it actually works. And see how this clip has fallen in again? Yeah, you got to be real careful of that. Yeah, you do not want that to jam up. Now, when you're spinning the uh, distributor around, if it's out in a vice, you'll feel when the poles 
all meet up, you'll feel it, oh, it locks and sits in that position and then you can move it through it. So, all good. So that spins around, centered. How easy was that? The only hard part was getting this vacuum unit back on and the real painful. Now it's time to uh, retime it, yeah? So I've got a video on static timing, electronic uh, uh, distributor. So uh, if you didn't notice the relationship of these poles to each other and where the vacuum unit was facing when you pull this apart, uh-oh, doesn't matter. Just go to the video and re-static time it according to the way I've always done it in the past. All right, put your rotor back on, put your cap on, and make sure it's located correctly. There's always a locating lug in the cap to lock it in. So you can see it locks in position. So uh, that's all good. Fire up your car. All right, it should be beautiful. You may have to recheck your timing again because if you've had to recenter that, your timing would be probably one or two degrees out. Um, depending when your trigger module triggered the ignition from the pulse that was getting from the uh, pickup coil. Um, that's why it's important to center this, all right, so that you get the module triggers the ignition in the right spot and it's a good signal, all right. And uh, I think I'll throw up a wave pattern that we normally get out of this when we're uh, turning this around by hand. And uh, means nothing to most people except mechanics will know what that wave pattern is um so yeah just thought i'd throw that in there uh all right so we're done that's uh part two over and done with yeah i've brought out the caution of that clip make sure you don't get that clip jammed in there or you will break that uh, lug off it can be repaired all right i've repaired these before made a little pin uh, to go in there, file the guts of the trigger wheel out till it was around, and then put a pin in there instead. So, yeah, but all that stuff costs you money uh, if you get a, a professional to do it for you. All right, so uh, that's job done. And uh, in part three, I'm going to go into a little bit more depth, okay? We're going to, we're going to be using a bit of equipment. We're going to actually check that the pickup coil works and the stator and trigger wheel are triggering the, the pickup coil properly and we're going to do a few little tests on the module there aren't not much you can do to the module uh, but we'll we'll cover it, all that in part three so we'll catch you then